It's, it's sort of my way, my little way of becoming American from the waist down. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to clothes, the things that we wear to stay warm and to also stop our bits and bobs from showing. And since moving to the United States, it's very much become part of my awareness that people in the United States dress differently to how I would have done back home and certainly how all of my friends and family do. Some of those don't even wear clothes. I'm lying. We're very shy about that. That's the French. We're, go we're going to Paris in the summer, so I'll be sure not to pack anything. But in the United Kingdom, of course, all we wear is tweed and top hats. That's that's a stereotype. We don't actually do that. Uh, we wear we wear regular clothes. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's if you see British people on television, then their clothes are probably indicative of the kinds of things we actually do wear in the UK. Unless you're the doctor, nobody dresses quite like her. But she's from Gallifrey, so it doesn't really count. Anyway, American clothes are very slightly different. Some clothing differences here are governed by sports, or the way you sleep, or just how you navigate weather. And so without further ado, as spring is upon us, here are five clothing items I only wore after moving to the United States. Oh yes, look at this. I look like a truck driver from a 1980s movie. Or a baseball player, because that's what this is. It's a baseball cap. Uh, and because we don't have the game of baseball in the UK, these aren't as popular over there. And uh, I never wore one. That's a lie. I did. I did once wear that light water valley hat. It was big orange and bright. But I was a child. It was to help locate me if I got lost and to look cool. I didn't ever achieve that, unfortunately. I had a tie-dye t-shirt. I think all children aged 12 did in the 90s. Um, but this baseball cap has quite a lot of meaning to me. Firstly, it's a St. Patrick's Day baseball cap that I purchased, I think, last year or the year before. But also, of course, it's Chicago based and the reason that this is personal for me is that I moved to Chicago just before the Cubs won the World Series and I was actually in Wrigleyville the night it happened and it was crazy and meant I didn't have a baseball cap then I I needed to stay neutral in case there were any opposition fans in and around although they would have been beaten to death I'm not saying that baseball fans are murderous I'm just I know what it's like when people have had beers at a sporting event of that magnitude anyway baseball caps are something that I've come to wear if I'm if I'm going casual and it's the summer months or the spring months and the sun is out and you know otherwise shining in my eyes although that doesn't typically happen here in Chicago where there's there's lots of cloud cover and in that respect it is a lot like England and in that respect only uh, something that I wouldn't wear in the summer months is our next entry it's also something that I never wore in England Yes, now look at me. I definitely look like that sort of stereotypical truck driver from an 80s film. My my name is probably Gus or something like that. But this plaid or flannel shirt is something that I took to wearing one Christmas when a family member bought it for me and I, I didn't have the heart to say no. I, w I mean, I wish I had, but it was good in those winter months, you know, when you didn't really care what anyone thought of you because they were all they all look ridiculous, too. And it kept you warm. It does that. I mean, under these hot lights, I'm absolutely sweating right now, but I'll continue because I'm a pro. And, you know, it's not really the kind of shirt that's popular in Britain, mainly because we don't have cowboys. But Amy Pond did wear one in Doctor Who. There's another Doctor Who reference. What's going on? Is it? I'm just trying to be in vogue, I think, with the trending terms right now. Uh, just for the record, she wasn't wearing one the day I met her, you know. And yes, I've heard the Lost in the Pond jokes before. And so, you know, this is still the time of year you might wear them. You could even be wearing them going into spring, but certainly wouldn't recommend uh, wearing them much beyond then, especially because, as I've established before, it gets very hot and humid in the Midwest. And because of that, I also wouldn't wear our next entry beyond winter. OK, I'll be honest with you. Growing up in the United Kingdom, I did wear pyjamas when I was a child because I perceived it as something thereafter that only children did. And so I got out of it and started sleeping in my boxes until that became too much and I started sleeping like a French person sunbathes. But, and this probably lends itself to the fact that we live in the coldest place in the entire universe and the fact that my wife's family always buy pyjamas for everybody at Christmas every single year. It's, it's getting embarrassing now. I've got about 12 pairs in that closet. And so I'm just going to give you a quick sample of what I wear these days. It's these perfect Star Wars pants, you know, just pyjama type things. And they're kind of made of similar material, you know, so it is very, sometimes too warm in that room where we sometimes have to close the door because the cat will come in and scratch us otherwise and the heat just cranks up. Anyway, you didn't need to hear that. This is too much. 
I mean, it's 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 good when you're being lazy and you just want to walk around in your house in this. You know, you don't you don't have to be naked, and which is particularly good when you've got people around. Much better to have people hang out than you. Never mind. And just a little word on the spelling of pajamas. Of course, in Britain we spell it P Y J A M A S, whereas in America it's P A J A M A S. I frankly don't care which spelling it is. Although I did write an article about this very difference many years ago. If you would like to look into the etymology of that word, the link is below. Now, sometimes if the stars align and the cat is being well behaved and we can leave the door open, it gets a bit chilly in there, and I get cold feet. Not in the metaphorical sense, but in the literal sense. Of course we wear socks in the United Kingdom. I mean, who doesn't wear socks? Except the French, perpetually naked. Um, but here, I've taken to wearing not just socks, but extra thick socks, and particularly, of course, during the winter, something that I've talked about before. I didn't think I'd need them. I didn't think I'd ever need anything quite as, as thick as this, but they are. They're about that thick. Um, they are nice, I will say that. And and sometimes they're good to wear beyond the winter, like in the springtime, right? I'll wear them, I'll wear them in the house, especially when the floor hasn't been cleaned, and I'm too lazy to do that. Um, it's a nice substitute for slipping. Slippers, although I do have those. I've, I've always had slippers. But in my drawer, at any one time, I do have the odd, sometimes very odd, pair of socks. And the, these are literally odd. I don't, not sure what happened with those. Um, sometimes that will happen, though, in my life. Um, it's just the way I roll. Um, but so long as they, they keep my feet warm, who cares if they match? No one's going to see them because you're wearing those big, hefty boots that I wear in winter. Um, incidentally, if you are wondering why those winter boots and the big winter jacket haven't made this list, it's because I've, I've covered them before. I don't want to tread old ground. <laughs> that was a joke about footwear. Besides, we're moving away from winter. Spring is almost upon us. I mean, it is in March, technically, although I live in Chicago. So let's finish now on an item of clothing I not only wear in the winter, but when the flowers are blooming. It's not a Hawaiian shirt. Yes, jeans, 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 but not just any pair of jeans. Old Navy jeans. I did wrestle with the idea of including my H&M pair of jeans in this very list, but there are two reasons that I didn't. Firstly, we have H&M in the UK. Secondly, and no offence, but H&M clothes tend to fall to pieces. If I, if I could think of an appropriate phrase here, it might be what my British compatriots refer to as absolutely pants. I, just, I mean, I've just realised that's literally true here. It sort of goes with the territory. But Old Navy jeans, and I'm not getting paid to say this, so don't get that idea in your head. Old Navy jeans are way better far far more durable and they keep me warm during the sometimes i don't even have to double up there are some pairs of trousers under which i will wear my cycling pants which are very tight especially around the legs and you don't want to see me in those on a french beach or otherwise and you know unlike the h&m jeans old navy very much an american company san francisco born and is not really known in the united kingdom you will not find old navy stores out there so this is it's sort of my go-to it's 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 sort of my way my little way of becoming american from the waist down that's it for this episode thank you for tuning in let me know in the comments below if you're wearing clothes or specifically what they are that's the more important bit and if you would like to keep up with me on a day-to-day -day basis and find out more little factoids about britain versus america follow me on twitter at lost in the pond us and if you want to get a more visual update on those things you could you could just subscribe that's the easiest way. Click my little face or whatever it is you need to do to subscribe to me and that would be great. Big shout out to all my patrons. You have made this channel amazing, basically. You've paid for everything and I really appreciate that. I've gone from videos in my bedroom to videos in an actual studio. It's not, I mean, it's still my apartment, but I have lights and camera and a good mic nowadays and a few more brain cells because of you. You paid for those brain cells and I really thank you. If you'd like to become a patron of this channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Takes five minutes. Head there now. And if you do that, I will go to that beach in France and I will wear those cycling trousers. That's, that's not a promise. That's a threat. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you for watching this episode of Lost in the Pond. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and if you would like to support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash lostinthepond.